Welcome back to our webinar series. Today we are going to talk about differential scanning calorimetry, DSC, more particularly nano-DSC, which is one of the techniques that we have at our facility in the Biolab. The Biolab is located at the Nova School of Sciences and Technology and gathers in a single unit a unique set of state-of-the-art biophysical and biological techniques, namely circular dichroism, differential scanning calorimetry, flow cytometry, microscale thermophoresis, and multiparametric surface plasma resonance. If you are interested in knowing more about us, our website is in the description box of this video. In this presentation, I will talk about the definition of differential scanning calorimetry, differential scanning microcalorimetry, the characteristics of DSC data, I will discuss the types of questions addressable using the nano DSC, present the advantages of this technique. I will also present to you the instrument that we have in our facility, the requirements of this technique, and give some application examples. As you might know, a calorimeter measures the heat into or out of a sample. A differential calorimeter measures the heat of sample relative to a re reference and a differential scanning calorimeter does all of the above and heats the sample with a linear temperature ramp. Differential scanning calorimetry, DSC, is a thermoanalytical technique in which the difference in the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of a sample and reference is measured as a function of temperature. Differential scanning microcalorimetry is a much more sensitive technique than traditional DSC. Our nano DSC differential scanning calorimeter is designed to characterize the molecular stability of dilute in solution biomolecules. DSC is the only technique that allows the direct measure of midpoint of the thermal unfolding, heat capacity change and enthalpy. The heat capacity change is determined from baseline shift before and after unfolding and primarily reflects exposure of hydrophobic groups. The area under unfolding peak is the enthalpy of the unfolding reaction, primarily due to hydrogen bonds breaking or disruption of hydrophobic interactions. The midpoint of the thermal unfolding is the temperature at which half the molecules are unfolding and is an indication of the stability of the molecule. Nano DSC can address a series of biological questions such as stability of proteins and protein structural components, cooperativity and reversibility of unfolding folding reactions, environmental effects on stability and reversibility, enthalpic and entropic contributions to protein stability, stability of molecular assemblies, effect of ligand binding on protein ligand complex stability, and these approaches. Uh, are applicable to all biological macromolecules, not just proteins. Nano DSC has a series of advantages over other methodologies. It is label free and use native materials, is a true in solution technique, easy to perform, can be conducted using a wide range of biological buffers, ionic strengths, and pHs. It is an universal assay, measures the heat change associated with inaturation. Non-optical, is affected by colored or turbid samples, and versatile, can be used with proteins, nucleic acids, lipids, and other biomolecules. In a single DSC experiment, one can determine transition midpoint, enthalpy, and heat capacity change associated with unfolding. Our instrument is the Nano DSC from TA Instruments. It has an operating temperature from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 130 degrees Celsius, scan rates from 0.001 to 2 degrees per minute, operating pressure up to 6 atmospheres, response time of 6 seconds, and the heat measure type is by power compensation. This device has a capillary cell design for analysis of samples that tend to aggregate or precipitate. Cell volume is 300 microliters. The Nano Analyze software allows for accurate model fitting and multi-file and multi -file batch processing. Now regarding Nano DSC requirements. Concerning protein concentration, the sensitivity and accuracy of the Nano DSC is demonstrated by this data. Hen egg white lysozyme in pH4 glycine buffer was prepared at various concentrations. 
As little as 2 micrograms of lysozyme in the capillary cell is sufficient to provide quality data yielding accurate values of all 4 thermodynamic parameters. The ideal protein concentration for a DSCSA is around 0.5 mg per milliliter. However, sometimes you can perform the assay with less if the signal is known to be strong. To completely fill the DSC cell, you need a volume of 700 microliters. Regarding buffer compatibility, as you might know, buffers with high ionization enthalpy undergo large changes in pH as temperature increases. You should use buffers with low ionization enthalpy such as acetate, formate, citrate or glycine. Quaternary amine buffers have high ionization enthalpies and should also be avoided. You should use only thermostable additives. For reducing agents, TCEP is preferable to beta mercaptoheptanol or DTT and have caution with viscous additives especially preservatives and stabilizers such as glycerol and detergents because they can trap air bubbles and dialyze very slowly and interfere with the DSC scan. For a successful experiment, you should dialyze samples to remove contaminants, match buffer in reference cell, accurately determine concentration of active biopolymer, degas truly, keep cells clean, and check for reversibility, oligomerization, kina and kinetic refolding effects. Now, I will give you some application examples regarding stability, unfolding, structure membranes, and binding. Regarding stability, you can compare native, altered, and mutant forms of proteins. With NanoDSC, you can determine the midpoint of the thermal unfolding, also known as melting temperature, of native and mutant proteins and characterize thermodynamically the effect of mutations. With NanoDSC, we can gather information about protein unfolding and refolding reversibility. Acquired and analyzing more than one scan of the same sample, we can see if the unfolding process is reversible or not. If the scans have different profiles, we can infer that the unfolding is non-reversible. Non-reversibility of proteins unfolding indicates multi-domain or subunit structure, chemical alterations to the sequence, kinetic events hindering. Varying the scan rate of the DSC experiment also can give us information about protein unfolding. In this example, interleukin-1 receptor was scanned at 0.25, 0.5 and 1 and 1.5 degrees per minute. Scan rate dependence of TM indicates that folded and unfolding protein are not in equilibrium and that the unfolding is kinetically controlled. NanoDSC is used to study the effect of additives and formulations. Proteins used for pharmaceutical or industrial applications require stabilization against chemical and physical degradation. The choice of an additive or a formulation is generally determined empirically. DSC is the fastest way of evaluating additives' effect on TM and reversibility. In this example, the authors used NanoDSC to characterize the reversible thermal unfolding refolding and long period stabilization against aggregation and hydrolysis of solutions of lysozyme in ionic liquid rich ice avoiding solvents. In this other work, shows that DSC can be used to monitor the stability of substrate adsorbed cellulases during long term hydrolysis of insoluble cellulose. Thermal transitions of absorbed enzyme were measured regularly in subsets of a progressing hydrolysis, and the size of the tr transition peak was used as a gauge of the population of native enzyme. Regarding protein structure, NanoDSC can provide information about protein domains and subunit stabilities. Unfolding of domains and subunits with different thermal instabilities produce asymmetric thermograms. The convolution of the unfolding thermogram provides the number of domains or subunits. A small change in sequence or other alteration can affect the stability of the whole protein or the stability of one domain or subunit. 
ESC quickly reveals these stability changes, sheds light on how sequence and thermodynamics In this example, oligomerization of tumor suppressor P53 was studied at 70, 93, and 146 millimolar. TM increased with increase in concentration demonstrates the formation of higher order association states. The SC can also give information on membranes and membrane protein interactions. As you might know, membrane proteins are mostly hydrophobic and are difficult to work with and very difficult to purify. The SC can provide indication of a protein inserted into a specific membrane. Specific changes in lipid thermogram indicates how proteins interact with membrane. Most techniques are affected by cloudiness, such as light scattering, but TSC is not affected. In this example, two to three molecules of membrane protein were added to DPPC, the green curve. The other curves are without protein. Shifting shift in TM identifies that protein empts into DPPC B layer. This paper is an example of lipid protein interactions. The reverse vaccinology approach has recently resulted in the identification of promising protein antigens which in combination with appropriate adjuvants can stimulate customized protective immune responses. The aim of this study was to elucidate the mechanisms of interactions between the equally sized but oppositely charged model proteins, antigens, alpha-lactoalbumin and lysozyme, and the clinically tested cationic liposomal adjuvant CAFO1, or the neutral adjuvant formulation NAFO1. The thermal stability of the model proteins and the gel to liquid crystalline phase transition temperature, the TM in this case, of the vesicles in, suspens in suspension were determined by using DSC. The last application example is the study of binding by DSC. If a ligand binds preferentially to a folded protein, the TM of the protein will generally increase. The more bound ligand there is, or the tighter it binds, the more TM increases. DSC can determine binding constants at TM. It's not ideal, but useful if very slow or very tight binding. DSC is a quick way to determine if two molecules interact. In this example, the binding constant of CTD2-phosphate to RNAs A was determined. Now I will give you a brief overview of nano-DSC. It provides precise measurement of biological interactions, it is an universal detector of all biological processes, is in solution, native materials, no need to label or immobilize. Direct correlation between TM and stability provides easy screening of biopharmaceuticals prior to real-time stability testing. DSC provides a global thermodynamic profile of energetics of molecular stability. Reversibility of the unfolding of a biopolymer. This has many practical ramifications, including the design of mutant proteins, stabilizing formulations, and drugs. Expanding applications in life science include rapid, accurate domain characterization, molecular unfolding and refolding thermal processes, bioengineered molecular vari variant stability testing, and characterization of high affinity protein protein interactions. To finish this webinar, I would like to recommend these resources to for further information in NanoDSC. Thank you for your attention, and if you have further questions, you can leave them in the comment section of this video, or contact me using this email. For more information about the BioLab, this is our website. Thank you once again. Take care.